Joining me now, New York State Assemblyman Mike LePetri. Mike, it's great to see you. Great to see you too, Steph. So, Mike, do you think that these restaurants can actually operate at only 25% occupancy? No, absolutely not. They're going to take what they can get right now. As you heard it in the audio, is many restaurant owners at this time, they're going to just basically survive. And that's all it is right now in New York City, is just trying to survive and make it. Because once the cold comes, you're going to have big time troubles, big problems with diners not being able to dine outside, obviously, and have to dine inside. And if you're only having 25% capacity, you're barely, you're barely covering your overhead. Well, and you also heard in the audio uh, that the governor kind of expects people to police everyone else. So how do you think that's going to work out? Like, who do you call if somebody's not wearing a mask or if you see a restaurant isn't following the rules? The governor wants total control. That's, that's what's clear as day, is he wants people policing other people because obviously you defunded the police, so you have to rely on the residents. And then on top of it, you want them to turn over their personal information to contact tracers just so they can follow you around and constantly harass you. I mean, this in New York City and New York State as a whole, you're seeing government control as its finest. You're seeing and government negligence at its finest. I mean, you're seeing the governor focus on th these restaurant owners rather than the riots and lootings in the streets, rather than the fact that you're seeing skyrockets and gun arrests, uh, gun arrests and shootings, and rather than focusing on the, the 11,000 people that you killed in nursing homes. But of course, Governor Cuomo is going to completely ignore that and focus on restaurant owners instead. It's a travesty. What do New Yorkers think about contact tracing the people that you've talked to? The ones that I've spoken to, let's just say, uh, they're not turning over any personal information where Big Brother is overseeing them and following them and asking them what they're doing, when they're doing it, how they're doing it. What it comes down to is, is common civility. It's people understanding that they have to maintain certain distances, be clean, and maintain common hygiene, washing your hands, watching where you sneeze, watching where you cough. People can do that. We're adults here. And it's time that the government starts treating the people like adults rather than children and telling them what to do and how to do it. Yeah, I mean, we need to be good to each other. That is, if you have a fever and a cough and coronavirus symptoms, stay home, uh, do your self-quarantine until you're better. And then, you know, once, you're, once you feel like you don't have it, maybe go get a test to make sure you don't have it. And then you can go back out in society. Now, over 150 New York City CEOs and business leaders sent a letter to Mayor Bill de Blasio pleading with him about the quality of life and public safety. And this is something that you kind of touched on was the crime happening and uh, just kind of like the recklessness when it comes to managing the protests. Yes, they're pleading to, to crack down on these quality of life concerns, to crack down on the crime, allow the police to do their job, have sanitation back out in the streets. I mean, garbage, garbage is through the roof right now, piling up on each other on the streets. You're seeing homelessness rampant on the streets. People don't feel like that they can go out and enjoy the nightlife in New York City because right now, frankly, there isn't any nightlife. And you have to worry about you have who knows what on the streets. You see people uh, doing drugs. You see criminals uh, shooting others. You see criminals being re-released back onto the streets thanks to so-called bail reform. So you're not having the city that once was. This is a new age. It's frankly uh, going back to the 1970s, 1980s when 42nd Street was disgusting and had to be cleaned up by Giuliani. And now you're seeing the same things happen. So history, in a sense, is repeating itself on that end. But unfortunately, the old days where it was nice and able to be uh, attractive for tourists and others, that's long gone. What, you said trash is piling up? What, I, I don't understand that. What's different? <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. That's what we're seeing left and right in the streets. But hopefully we have a change in leadership in the future. No November, this election is going to be huge for the state. And next year for the city is going to be enormous. So we have to make sure we're the right people that actually care about fiscal management, care about supporting our police, and ultimately caring about quality of life concerns. Yeah. I saw this, that there's a tidal wave of vacancies in Manhattan. Obviously, Manhattan's not your district. Uh, people uh, are, are leaving New York City. It's the, called the exodus there. They're taking off to the suburbs. Are they, are they taking off and trying to move to your district? Yeah, throughout the island, Nassau and Suffolk County on Long Island and Westchester, people are fleeing in droves from New York City. I mean, it was a 5% vacancy rate in Manhattan. Uh, prices on Manhattan's east side is down approximately 10% from just a year ago. And that's because you're seeing unemployment uh, throughout New York City just skyrocketing. It's about 20% unemployment in New York City alone, 16% throughout New York State. 
but throughout the island and other suburbs surrounding New York City, we actually care about our sub our police and our quality of life. So what happens is we support our law enforcement and those that try to do their job, we're right behind them. Those that wish to clean up our streets, we're right with them. And frankly, those people that are in New York City, they're fleeing in droves, they want that type of lifestyle and that's where they're gonna get it. Yeah, no one blames them for fleeing. We just don't want their politics uh, where they're going if they're going to uh, red districts or red states, right? Well, that's the age-old question. I mean, if you're coming here, by all means, you're welcome, but don't bring your political ideology with you. That's clearly toxic, and we don't need that. The AOCs, the Tiffany Cabans, and all of them, no, your extremist socialist mentalities can stay out of there because what we want is we care about America, we care about our freedoms, and we care about allowing people that are hardworking, middle-class, uh, Long Islanders, suburbs, all of them to prosper how they wish. You work hard, you can make it. By all means, we want you su to succeed. Well, we're totally out of time. We're going to have to leave it here. Thank you. Thank you. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube. And call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.